dear friends i welcome you to international school of biblism this is a part of our or unit of our bible medicine ministries uh, now today we are going to start a new topic this is a course this is one of the parts of uh, the course today we are going to see uh, biblical life application studies about biblical life application studies what is that all about uh, let me explain and teach you tell you a little bit about it uh, please uh, listen very carefully so that it will be useful for you lest it should be uh, set aside or set at not or uh, lest it should go ununderstood <clears throat> now we start with this one we are living on this earth this is a life that is given for us to live on the earth this planet right we are born that is birth and we live here in the meantime we encounter a lot of things so many things are coming on the way we encounter a lot of things and we work i put it this way birth life work and if i put this in the biblical way rebirth faith and baptism why should i say baptism i explain you and that's why i asked you to listen to me carefully birth we are born right so please understand this topic also this is a life application biblical life application what the bible uh, speaks about or says about the life or how we have to live in accordance with the verses of the bible or uh, Uh, how we have to make our life portion to the verses of the bible this is what is being explained right <clears throat> now let me start with this introduction this is an this is an introduction for the introduction of our um, biblical life the bible speaks about our life it doesn't speak from when we are born no it starts from our uh, uh or what we say it starts from before birth or prior to our being born or prior to our birth that is what is given in the bible it's very clearly given <coughs> and we can uh, take this way we are now going to see our birth and our rebirth before that what the bible speaks about <clears throat> the bible speaks about our being our being before our birth we are there that's why we are born have you understood i, I mean have you asked yourself at any time at any point of time where were we or how we were just before we are born the bible speaks about this one in <clears throat> psalms 139 13 verse number 13 for i read it out from new international version for you created my inmost being and you knit me together in my mother's womb this is what is given for you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb how beautifully it has been given how beautifully it has uh, uh, given a picture or how beautifully it has uh, depicted our being for you created my inmost being inmost being you have created my inmost being wherein you have knit my me together in my mother's womb 
This word, the particular word, NIT, K-N-I-T, NIT, is a very fantastic uh, uh, word or fantastically used. This word has been fantastically used. NIT me. You have NIT me. NIT uh, <coughs> past and past participle, both are NIT. Sometimes NIT can also be used. Okay. So, NIT, <coughs> this particular word is mostly used in textiles. Textile industry, <coughs> wherein we can find this particular word, NIT. NIT means you have interwoven, you have uh, just uh, um, uh, in the textile language, you could understand this one. You have interwoven me, you have put all the things together in such a way that I should come out with a fantastic way. You have uh, knit me together or knitted me together in such a way that I should come out out of my mother's womb with a beautiful uh, being or beautiful um, uh, something what we say uh, human being. I come out as a human being, human being with the, so much of uh, things inside or into the inmost being which have been knit or knitted beautifully, correctly, fantastically, excellently, exceedingly excellently. That is what is meant in the King James Version. The same verse goes like this, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast uh, covered in my mother's womb. Here reins, this particular word is used, reins, it's also a very important word. You have possessed my reins, what does it mean? You have possessed my reins means you have possessed my, the reins uh, does mean Another reigns is a one word. I, I take it as a one word. It means kidneys. Kidney. Kidney is also known as kidneys. Two kidney, we have uh, two kidneys, no? It's a. Uh, uh, it's a. Uh, two kidneys are there. These two, two kidneys. It's known as kidney. I, I refer to as kidney. This is one of the organs, very important organs one of the organs and it means passions and feelings it means fashions and feelings so reigns means passions and feelings so you have possessed me this is used in uh, 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 in that uh, word knit was used I said a net, a knit is used to mostly in the textile industry it's a textile language the same way, when we refer to the horses, we use the word rain. So, reins control the horses. The same way, reins being possessed by God and our inner organs, our inner feelings, passions, everything has been controlled by God. That we should come out and we should go ahead as we have been already controlled, we had we had to go live out our life till we die, the way we were controlled in our mother's womb. Womb, who controlled? God controlled. So feelings and passions, everything is controlled over there. Feelings and passions are controlled by God when we are in the mother's womb. The reins are controlled, possessed by God. This is what is referred to here. So God created us in such a way that we should be a perfect human being when we are born. This is what is meant. So <clears throat> this is what is given there in 139, 139, 13 Psalms. Very beautifully it speaks about. <clears throat> Uh, so when before we are born we are there in the mother's womb and we are controlled by God that 
இவ இன்னர் பீயிங் இன்னர் ஆர்கன்ஸ் இன்னர் ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஷுட் பி பர்ஃபெக்ட்லி ஆல் ரைட் த சேம் வே வி ஆர் பார்ன் ஆன் அர்த் வித் அ பர்ஃபெக்ட் இன்னர் ஆர்கன்ஸ் நிட்டட் டுகெதர் இன் சச் அ வே தட் வி வுட் லிவ் அவுட் த லைஃப் பர்ஃபெக்ட்லி வெல் டில் வி டை திஸ் இஸ் வாட் இஸ் மென்ஸ் In Jeremiah 1.5, it speaks about something more than this one. That is what? What is that? This is more than that. Even before our being conceived in the mother's womb, we were there. This is what is meant. So, Jeremiah, he speaks about this one. Before I, uh, God speaks to him. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. So he was there in the mother's womb. Even before he was uh, formed in the mother's womb, even before he was con- conceived in the mother's womb, God ordained him. And he had an eye on him. He had an eye on him. He ordained him. He sanctified him. All such things happened in the womb. even before he was conceived in the mother's womb not even before uh, he was born on earth no even before he was conceived on the mother's womb so what does it mean something is there even before he was conceived he was formed in the mother's womb so what does it mean so we are there even before we are conceived and that even before we are conceived is god's destination that we should be put into one mother's womb so what does it mean the 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 purpose of this lesson is that we don't have any choice of being born it is a, it is by chance we are born by chance not by choice by chance not by choice so in other language in a biblical way it is grace out of grace we are born out of grace only we are born right so we don't select our place are the mother to whom we we have to be born no we don't select the parents we don't select the mother we don't select the mother's womb who selects god selects so we don't have any authority over it do you have you ever thought about our life we don't con- uh, we don't have any control over our life health even sometimes people get afflicted with so many diseases they 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 are suffering with the diseases heart stops sometimes if you have control over your heart if you have control over your heart you can do what you can stop i mean you can stop um from its being stopped or you can uh, you can be very careful about your uh, uh, heart stopping from its function but you have no control you don't have any control so certain times we people we have uh, we have seen people youth speaking about themselves we have our life and we have all freedom why you are controlling parents they are shouting screaming at the parents saying we have the we have a human beings we have our own uh, free will we have select we have to select our own life that's why they select so many people i mean so many couple uh, get uh, divorced and they they get uh, uh, get into all sorts of problems only because of this one because they don't think uh, that the parents are for them and god is for them or nothing they themselves they think that they themselves select their own life only in that particular matter they cannot control their uh, divorce they cannot even control their uh, um, disease they cannot control their uh, becoming old they cannot control their, uh, their death nothing starting from de- uh, birth to death we don't have any control over our own body right we are born in certain places if we have some selection how we would have selected ourselves to be born you know selected a very good parents very rich parents 
and we would have selected very powerful parents we would have selected some parents who are uh, authority over the world or something like that we would have selected such parents mother's womb such a mother would have selected nothing would have happened like that so god selects your birth itself so he selects a mother's womb for you to be born on earth so even before you are born you are selected by god and when you just want to get conceived you don't want to get conceived god wants you to get conceived in the particular mother's womb and you get conceived over there and you are born out of the mother's womb so selection is god's it is not your choice it's god's wish so it's grace out of grace you are born out of grace you are selected even before your birth even you are be conceived all this happen only by only by chance not by choice it's grace out of grace you are born you are being formed you are being selected even before you are conceived such a great thing happens in our life but we don't think about that one this bible invites us to think about all these things that's why we can live a good life as expected by god that is what it is not the life that uh, is being lived by the people who don't accept god or who don't follow god it's god's wish and uh, moreover uh, i just want to invite you to uh, know about this one also in uh, some people psychologists they say a uh, psychologist some uh, medicinal aspect and uh, some scientists uh, certain ways uh, I, i don't know whether it is proven or not but uh, in certain places certain times it is said uh, most of the time people are when you are born you become a, uh, you, you have age 1 but you are born be even before that but nobody considers it you are there in the mother's womb for 9 uh, or 10 months but uh, it is not considered as you were there alive but when you are born it seems to be uh, the zero zero age and when 10 months or one i mean 12 months pass passes 12 months pa- pass you are considered being of age one aged one first uh, year is being celebrated on this particular day right so you are uh, your age is being celebrated after 12 months of your birth even before that you are there so this is a second age it should be celebrated like that but it is we don't know do that so world uh, world is calculation i'm uh, going according to the world's calculation but even we we don't follow the calculation as for the world it's given in the world right so uh, we are there and we are born and we are uh, uh, our age is very important especially the first year and the same way it is said third year is important ninth year is important and 13 year is important they say you see the bible even with uh, our uh, our uh, being aware of it or not it is it has been guided by the holy spirit to be written how the holy spirit has done the work of writing the bible so uh, i said psalms 139 13 139 13 one is the important year three is the important year nine is the important year 13 is the important year so this even this particular verse being put in such a way that it uh, it denotes your birth how it's going to be important in particular years 1 3 9 and 13 1 3 9 uh, uh chapter chapter number 1 3 9 that is 1 39 uh, verse number 13 do you understand this one certain times even the ambulance you no know, ambulance number it's given from the biblical aspect way <coughs> certain things so many things have been created are uh, formed 
whether uh, they are uh, be, I mean being aware of it or not being aware they have done it such a way that it should uh, um, comply or uh, it should uh, uh, be parallel with the verses of the Bible so that's one of the things it is for your understanding I have said this one now come to the point <coughs> Um, in the world, we have three types of ages. We call psychological age and we call um, chronological age and we call biological age. Psychological, chronological, biological age. These are the three types of ages that we come across. Psychological age, what is this? This is, this is nothing but the attitude. How you think about yourself, your age will be. Or how you think about your age, you will be. Or your age will be. This is what is uh, said by Julius Renaud, a uh, uh, good thinker. He has said, it is not how old you are. It is how you are old. Right? It is not how old you are, it is how you are old. This is what psychological. Psychological is being you are being conceived. So uh, thereby you have your own attitude. You think you are young, you are still young. Though you are chronologically old. Chronological age cannot be changed. It cannot be. <coughs> it is, uh, it is um, calculated uh, using now the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar. From uh, this was introduced in 1582 by Pope Gregory the Thirteenth, right? So um, chronological age cannot be changed. <coughs> this is on our entering the world and psychological before being formed in the mother's womb and another age is there this biological age this biological age is nothing but about health nothing but about our health health age this can be calculated you see you, you go to the internet and you find your you know, biological age you give your own age and your health um, uh, results medical report or result of your um, health, uh, I mean, uh, tests, no? Your health age will be given, your biological age will be given. This uh, same bio uh, biological age is uh, also called phenotypic age, phenotypic age. And the same way, we have one more uh, uh, word or name, this is epigenetic age. Epigenetic age, what is that? Epigenetic age is nothing but the chronological age being found out by the scientist if you if you are <coughs> if person who who is uh, who is considered orphan he doesn't know who is his parent who is his mother who is his uh, uh, father and when he was born nothing is known so this person will be <coughs> uh, uh, i mean uh, put into the test and he will be found out his age will be found out uh, as far as uh, tissues and cells using the tissues and cells this is a tissue and cells age whereby they will find out the age of the person without uh, using the calendar we most of the people we know our uh, birth through the um, mothers or fathers or somebody else's mouth but this particular person who doesn't know the <coughs> age or the birth through anybody else except through the test of the scientist. So that is called epigenetic age. Sorry. Now we come to this one. <coughs> psychological, chronological, biological ages. The psychological age is through our attitude. Chronological age through our calculation of the cal I mean calendar calculation. Biological age through our health. Now, 
you you just uh, take in this one i mean you just uh, uh, keep this in your mind now i come to this point very important point how we were created how we were created how we are born is based on the first birth of adam and eve adam was created and uh, god the father breathed the, his breath into the nostrils of adam so adam became a living soul he became a living soul because of the birth i mean the breath of the father so what does it mean he became a living soul that means he became a life his life came into his being because of the birth of the father the breath of the father so the breath of the father has gone into his uh, being so he has become a living soul that means his life has come into his being so now what does it mean his life itself or living soul does mean the breath of the father that is the holy spirit that is breathe holy spirit breathe the holy spirit b h s b h s breathe the holy spirit goes into a uh, person and he becomes a life he lives and is in the most beings are now you understand uh, you just don't uh, confuse this one i tell you is innermost being or innermost most organs or everything every organ which is being formed in the mother's womb but his breath is from god himself as it was done to adam so we are living because god is living in us we are living because god's breath is living in us so we are living because god has given birth uh, sorry is breath into us our inmost body inmost organ everything is created in the mother's womb because of god's possessing over our um, reins are uh, because god is net uh, uh, god is knitting our whole being but his breath is put into us and we become a living being we come out as a living being <coughs> this living being is the psychological aspect that is we are we were there even before we are born so this god's breath that breath is put into our being when we are conceived in the mother's womb and we come out and we live that way so who is living in us that is why uh, the bible says your body is the temple of god and the spirit of god is dwell, dwelling within you god is dwelling within you god's spirit is dwelling within you so the promise to holy spirit is something else which we are going to sp- uh, talk about um, uh, in the next uh, point before that you understand this one this is breathe the holy spirit breath of god that is living in us but adam controlled the breath of god that means the breath of god had all sort of goodness for us which was controlled all sort of goodness was controlled by adam's sin so it has been controlled except our living it is a life only life it is it has been controlled that it sh- it it as it uh, it cannot do anything else it was controlled in such a way that it could do uh, couldn't do anything else except living so it had uh, gone out of us who we would on would not have been live, living it is there only for our life so there is something lacking now that is the purpose of god's coming as man here jesus christ in the form of jesus christ who promised through his death and resurrection that he would give another console consoler or advocate who is the holy spirit that holy spirit is promised holy spirit promised to holy spirit is coming to do the activities of the controlled 
breathe the Holy Spirit. The breathe the Holy Spirit has been controlled by the sin of Adam and Eve and us. It has been controlled by the sin of Adam. So, it has been controlled except for life. And that control, uh, it, has been con it has been controlled, right? Now, that activity, I mean all the activities have been controlled by the sin of Adam. Now in this, in this uh, place, in that place, promise to Holy Spirit comes and he does the work. That is why we are now free to do. We are, uh, we, we, we can do things we can do if we, uh, we, we are uh, cooperating with the promised Holy Spirit, we can do things as God wanted Adam to do. Those possibilities are there. So, Holy Spirit is, promised Holy Spirit is there. <coughs> mm. And uh, even God has uh, known us, I said, God has known us even before our our conception in the mother's womb. Jesus depicts that in one of the verses, John 2, 24 to 25, wherein where he has uh, put this one. But Jesus say, did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and had no, uh, no need that anyone should testify of man. For he knew what was in man. So he has known about men. This also shows this one. I have formed you in the mother's womb. Even before you, you are being formed by me in the mother's womb, I have known you. This is what is said in Jeremiah 1.5. The same is being um, repeated or reiterated or uh, uh, explained by Jesus Christ in John 2, 24 to 25. That he is also known. because And he is testify, uh, testifying of himself that he is from God. Now, we understand this one. Our breath, Holy Spirit, has been controlled and our promise to Holy Spirit is coming in lieu of or in the place of or in the vacuum where it has been, um, it has been no control to lead us. That's why the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead us into all truth and he will teach us the truth also. He will be all in all. He will be praying for us. All such will happen. This is the purpose. In the beginning, when God created Adam, of his breath, through his breath, everything will be done. But he controlled all the activities of the Holy Spirit. This particular thing was replaced by the promised Holy Spirit. Now, now we understand one thing. This is a basic fundamental thing for the biblical living. This is a biblical living or the teaching on biblical living wherein we have to understand it is very necessary to have the promise to Holy Spirit in us. This is a particular thing. I have spoken this much only to let you know or to teach you or to tell you or to just to show you that the promise to Holy Spirit is very necessary or the necessity of the Holy Spirit is to be known to the Christians or the importance or the vital uh, uh, vital or uh, important uh, aspect of our Christian being is receiving the promised Holy Spirit. This is important. Okay, now receiving the promised Holy Spirit is important, right? So receiving the promised Holy Spirit, what should we do? Whether it is given by grace or by our own works? No, it is given by grace. The Bible speaks about everything. Because I started this with, by we are not born, we are born by our choice. We are born by chance. We are born out of grace. 
we have not selected how we were we have to be born or such and we don't have any control over us how we have to die or um, um, how we have to live or such no it is being controlled by god so control is elsewhere elsewhere people would say elsewhere we say it's in the hands of god in the hands of god and that is be perfectly perfectly done exceedingly uh, what we say exceedingly in an excellent way it is done by the promise to holy spirit promise to holy spirit the promise to holy spirit will be doing in an excellent way in an excellent way i would say in an exceedingly excellent way so promise to spirit holy spirit is important for us to live a life a christian life a biblical life that is the foundation that is the introduction for us so what have we to do to receive the promised holy spirit promised holy spirit is important uh, uh, promised holy spirit is important and we have to receive the promised holy spirit to live lead a good christian biblical life here on earth it is important for everybody to live a good life over here first starting with here then life here after for that life here is important in this life here we have to receive the holy spirit holy spirit can be received whether by grace or by our own works important it's by grace understood but what about our works certain works necessary what is that our belief our faith is also a kind of work what is that i tell you i explain that one the bible speaks about certain things which we have to do because god has given that uh, given uh, free agency that's important free will has been given to men we have been given the free agency we can select whatever we like god has not controlled us from selecting our own choice in certain things we can do certain things we uh, two things are placed over us ripe mango and uh, mango we can select whatever we like we have been given the negative one and the positive one. whatever we like we can select god doesn't have any control over that because he has already controlled us and he has <coughs> knit our knit our inner beings and his our passions and feelings were in his hands and um, our attitude was there uh, even before uh, we were conceived all such were there but when we are born he has given us full control over our certain things over uh, certain things such as selecting few things whichever food you want you can select that food which you select will lead you to uh, not a good life if you want a good life good health you have to select good food your diet should be good so god has even given the good life for us even the good uh, i mean uh, food uh, diet our dietary uh, system is also found in the bible that is why we have formed this bible medicine ministry wherein we have been speaking about that even the dietary system found in the bible why it is not for nothing it is for something it is given for something for our keeping this temple of god in such a way to work for god we have to live on the earth to work for god that is the purpose of god's creating us forming us knitting us and then uh, making us being born on the earth to live for him not to die for him he has died for us we have to live for him living for him is something very crucial and very hard because we have to get the beating by somebody is battering us and so many things are coming and we are encountering a lot of things we are meeting with the failures all such we are living there thinking that god will do all things for us everything is happening for us something for good that is what is romans 8 28 says we are here and we are encountering a lot of things so many things are coming on our way when we are starting our work we meet with failures all such happen but still we live because god loves us we know that god has a purpose for us that's hard thing if we want to die 
nothing will happen on the way and we will reach god or we or something that is uh, uh, that is very simple that is why he wants us to live on earth so promise to holy spirit is important for living a good life biblical life and uh, uh, and what we say christian life and an excellent life so for that little bit is our part what is that the bible says <clears throat> uh, a few things that is our choices that god gives us an advice don't do this don't do this if you want to live a good life don't do this see for example in india and in america everybody you can find state and religion are separate why because of this american constitution has been based on this one and indian even indian constitution where we find state and religion both are separate right it is separate religion is separate from the state so the people when we want to, if you want to become a leader you can otherwise leader i mean leader in the state you can even a christian can do but apart from that if you if, if you are a teacher if you are somebody else don't speak about the kings or the presidents or the prime ministers or somebody else who are in power the bible speaks about that you are put in the jail and nobody could do your work you were lost everything is over that is why the bible advises us not to do that god will guide you such a way in such a way that you would accomplish your work don't do that don't uh, even criticize about those people in power even in your chamber in your room in your own room don't do that bible advises us that you can find in ecclesiastes 10:20 ecclesiastes 10:20 it speaks very clearly well that don't speak about kings in your chamber in your chamber in your chamber in your room in your room in your private room don't do that lest a bird will take it to the authority that he was spoken this can be scientifically proven you know even a raven would do that can be scientifically very well proven in those days now we will understand it very clearly very well very easily uh would have heard about this one even the government would watch you even in your own private uh, rooms possible some one day will come and they will watch us even in our in our private rooms whether we are speaking against them all such will happen it's rather easier now only uh, we are living in the digital uh, world where it is very rather very easy we are controlling so many people watching us watching so many people uh, around us so if it were possible for us is it not possible for the government to uh, monitor us when we are in the private rooms it's very possible but these words when it were written 6000 years back in the old testament 6 6000 years back written very clearly well don't speak about them don't speak about the authority in your own private rooms lest that should be known lest that should be known let known to the authority and they will be punished so you cannot pursue you cannot continue you cannot go ahead with your own work don't do that you do your work what is the use of doing that you will get lost yourself you cannot do any work so do your work don't do that that is necessary the bible goes on speaking about one more thing that don't speak evil of other people no evil kingdom solution titus 32 uh, no evil of no man speak no evil of no man speak no evil of no man 
Don't speak about the, uh, any man. Is uh, any man in a wrong way? Don't speak any evil. No evil of any man. Don't speak. These are all possible things which we have to do. <coughs> and one more thing: these are the understandings. These are the things that we have to understand in the course of our uh, uh, being or living in the earth to receive the promise to Holy Spirit. These are the few things which we have to do. We have to select. These are the things which we can select, but the certain things which we cannot select. Even the select, uh, selection of uh, your own uh, um, partner, life partner, wife or husband, spouses, spouse selection. That's also important this way. We have to select in the right way. This is a selection process wherein we fail most of the time. If we fail in this, we will fail in most of the ways. We have to come out of that. God will help to come out. If you already failed, God will help you to come out. That is also the teaching of the Bible because Jesus Christ has come and he has, uh, he has come to save those people who have gone astray. So that is possible. But which is, which is more important, which is the best thing, not going astray. But you have gone astray after hearing this, you can come into his fold. So, uh, important aspects or important uh, thing or the vital thing that we should know is that we have to listen to or hear the good news. That is important. Listen to, listening, having knowledge. Okay, I come to that. Uh, and one more thing, we have to understand about money. Bible speaks about money also. Money. Money is needed, required for everything. Bible speaks very clearly well. The same Ecclesiastes 10.90 where we see money is needed for all things, for all things, everything. From the beginning of a day to the end of the day, you need money. Without money, you cannot even brush your teeth. You cannot live by eating. You cannot eat. So money is needed. But you have to differentiate. If a surgeon is keeping a knife, that is to save a life. If a thief is keep, keeping, uh, keeping a knife, it is to take away the life. So whether it is for taking away the life or for saving the life, it is not the knife which decides, it is the person who decides. So money doesn't decide whether for good or for bad. It is the person who possesses, the person who possesses it decide, who decide whether it is for good or for bad. Right? So. That is very, very important we have to know about. That is in Luke 16, 8. It's a very difficult passage to explain. I, ex I have explained about this in a, a separate message which uh, you can find in the YouTube. And we, we will be giving that also link or something like that here. Luke 16, 8. Um, this is uh, from the parable, Jesus' parable. He admires the... Uh, one of the persons, the manager, I mean, the owner of uh, 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 owner uh, admonishes his manager and he finds his mistakes false and he wants to, he wants his manager to be thrown away. The manager behaves in such a way to get the admiration, admiration from the owner. This happens. It goes like this, Luke 16, 8. He admires uh, the, the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. It goes like this. This particular word is used in the 
one of the verses, uh, one of the versions. He admires the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. New Living Translation. It comes like this. So, money is important. This is also about money. In Luke 16, 8, this is also about money. So, money, how we have to handle, this is uh, explained over there. So, we have to know a little bit about our living on the world. You should not criticize those people who are in authority. We should not speak about people who uh, go ahead of our life or something like that. We should not do that. And we should know a little bit about money also. These are important things. And God's ways are somewhat different also. You can find that. Uh, in the Egypt, Jews are slaves. They are, they are not given good salary. Their salaries are withheld. And they are given a lot of work. And they are beat, I mean, uh, um, they are uh, treated like uh, slaves. Actually, literally they are like uh, slaves. They are working hard. They don't get uh, that much uh, amount of money for their work. They are suffering like anything. They work a lot, but they get uh, uh, very less money. This is what is happening there in Egypt. So these people are show, shouting to God, praying to God, asking to show the justice what God should have done God should have done what God should have judged the Egyptians and he should have made the Egyptians to pay the Jews but he didn't do that this is not God's way but what God does later just to before liberating from Egypt what he said, it seems somewhat uh, very, uh, somewhat uh, very strange for God. But when you think of it, God's, God was silent when the Jews prayed to God to liberate them from the bondage of the Egyptians. And God was silent. Even when the people prayed to God that they are being given the, uh, they are uh, being treated like slaves, they are not given salary. But what happens when we are, when they were about to be liberated? God says, "Borrow silver and gold jewels from your neighbors, and put on your sons and daughters." It does look strange. But it's correct when you think about that, when you read the previous passages. This is found in Exodus 3.22. Borrow silver and gold jewels from your neighbors and put on your sons and daughters. This is the last verse. And they start uh, leaving Egypt. This happens. Can God do that? If you say no to this, can God be silent to the prayers of the Jews saying they are not being given any salary for the work done to the Egyptians? God was giving one day the full salary for the people who deserved it. They deserved that salary, but it was not given to them. God's way is the different. So we cannot question God. So we have to understand certain things. That's why I have explained. Now, we have uh, even the churches are in the world, are in our teachings. We have been uh, shown a hypocritic way. Many, many people in the churches, they say that we should not speak about money. Certain people, they go to that extreme of speaking about money. That is also wrong. Certain people in the churches even, they say, no, 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 we should not speak about money. But they are using money, they are uh, asking for money. They are building their churches with money of the people who are coming there with, with the money of the believers. 
but they stop the believers to church i mean build their own houses they stop uh, the believers to build their own houses and they make the people give the money to the people uh, in the churches uh, authorities in the churches to build their church or the houses they were their own properties that's a hypocritical way we have to understand about all this this is important so now we come to another aspect i say promise to holy spirit is important to restore the activities of the spirits which were controlled by the sins of adam so restoration is important for that the holy spirit the promise to holy spirit which was spoken of promised by christ is important this a promise to holy spirit is given out of the grace that is out of the faith that we have faith is also one of the parts of grace that is one of the dimensions of uh, god's uh, grace um, but that is important when we receive the promise to holy spirit we are reborn when we receive the birth of the holy spirit we are born when we receive the promise to holy spirit we are reborn so rebirth i i told you in the beginning itself birth versus rebirth both is out of the breath of the father that is breathed the holy spirit and this rebirth is out of the promise to holy spirit he comes into us and we are reborn that is important for our living here the christian life or the biblical life which is spoken of in the bible so we become reborn so we call ourselves reborn christians so now we are reborn we live a live a reborn life we start living a reborn life after receiving the promised holy spirit but when we come to this point you have to remember one thing that is in first corinthians 12:3 first corinthians 12:3 what does it say paul commands us gives us a commandment saying i command you not to confess jesus as the lord or christ jesus is the lord or christ without the holy spirit without holy spirit you should not call jesus as christ or jesus as the lord the lord and christ this uh, term are interchangeably used here i have explained in a separate message about this one lord and christ both are interchangeably used you can either use lord or christ both can be used when you see the greek language i mean uh, greek language i will explain about this in a different message so now i put it this way you cannot call jesus as christ you have not given any authority to call jesus as christ or lord except through the holy spirit so holy spirit is important then only you are given the christian liberty right so you you to remember this one i just to explain this one i come to this one this uh, particular part uh, when you find in matthew 16 17 jesus is calling his disciples and asking them how he is known by the people how he is known by the people how the people uh, the, uh, have known about him or how he the, the people had known about him he is calling his disciples and asking them how the people have a uh, people had known about him everybody is telling the he is a prophet and he, they they say that you are so so all such okay stop now you tell me you disciples you tell me who i am peter he comes forward and he says 
Yes, you are the son of, you are Christ, the son of living God. Christ, Christ, this particular word is very important, Christ. You keep it. Don't tell, to, don't tell anybody. It stops him saying it anymore to anybody until his death. That happens. That time he says, this has not been revealed to you through flesh and blood. It, is, it has been revealed to you through my father, the heavenly father. He has done it. So flesh has not done it, which has done it, the heavenly father. That is the purpose. That is the purpose. Why I say this flesh has not done it. Flesh, when you act in flesh, when you speak in flesh, you cannot find Christ. You can find Jesus, but you cannot find Christ. That is why Paul says, don't call Jesus as Christ unless until or until through uh, the Holy Spirit. So, here, he, he, Peter, through the Father, he is able to say, not through the flesh. I explain this through Galatians 5. There you can find 19, 20, 21. These verses say like this. I read out these verses. I have spoken about this in you know, a multi number of times, but I read this uh, again. Galatians 5, uh, 19, 20, 21. There, uh, there it is spoken. 17 things, 17 plus things. In King James Version, you can find the 17 plus things. These are the things which are the functions of the flesh, activities of the flesh. I read out. 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, or drunkenness, revelings, and, the, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is what is given. I read out uh, the first uh, uh, part of uh, the 19th verse. Uh, now the works of the flesh are manifest. What are the works of the flesh? It's 17 plus things. And the like, 17 plus. These are the manifest things of the flesh. Here, Jesus says, this is not through the flesh. So, flesh manifestations are the 17 things. These are the things which we have to control. That is why I told you few things which we have to control. Stop smoking um, uh, uh, and uh, to have a good life, healthy life. Have a good, uh, you know, what we say, biological age. We have to, we have to, start, uh, we have to stop smoking. We have to start sleeping well. We have to manage our stress level. We have to have a very good uh, uh, eating habit, relationships, and we have to laugh a lot. All such other things. These are the things which are found here in the 17 things which we can, uh, which we, we, we can put into this. Are these things which I, uh, I, I, I refer to can be put into the 17 plus things. These are the things are expected from us to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, to have His grace. His grace is given, but the grace, for the grace, these are the works necessary on our part. This is sometimes um, left over by uh, preachers, most of the preachers. They don't, they concentrate only on this and this, these two extremes. And they speak about money. That is, a, that is the purpose of uh, their speaking. Thereby, they forget all these things. If they start speaking about this, they will lose everything. That's why we don't ask for any uh, donation. We don't ask for any donation for this particular thing or for uh, donation or we, what we say, uh, tithes or uh, some uh, um, things like that. No, offering, something like that. We don't do that for the, all the past 25 years. We have not done because of this one. This is, now this has been put as a course wherein you have to uh, use certain methods to do that. You have to pay your fees and you have to learn. 
but we don't ask for anything this way right now flesh has not revealed this one this has been revealed to the person called peter or peter has been revealed of this truth that jesus is none but christ through father not through the flesh the flesh will manifest these 17 plus things but the bible again in the same galatians 5 Mm, there you can find in uh, verse number 22 23 24 24 where you can find this one uh, 22 23 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law <coughs> but the fruit of the spirit <coughs> spirit fruit of the spirit is these nine things one of the things that is the seventh one is the faith so faith is also the out of grace this is coming um, out of grace of the spirit so for the fruit of the spirit is all these things this fruit of the spirit uh, it is not the fruits of the spirit it is one one spirit that is the only one fruit fruit is nothing but the spirit that is a promise holy spirit the dimensions of the holy spirit are the dimension of the fruit spoken here are number 9 nine, nine numbers seventh one is faith so that is given by grace given through grace given by god but we have to do the galatians 5 19 2021 this we have to do 19 2021 17 1 uh, or uh, 17 plus we have to avoid that is our choice our choice should be our choices should be right where uh, the place only one place where god has given our choice that choice should be right other places God has given things out of his grace. So to have grace, we have to use right choices. We have to understand this one. This is the basic principles of our being. But we mostly, we, when we start living a Christian life, that's a reborn life, by getting the promised Holy Spirit, we have certain duties. we have certain duties these are the important duties start your christian life then you can preach jesus the christ first corinthians 12 3 gives us permission to preach christ without any hesitation and then we have to have a few duties to be carried out or carried on james 2 14 to 17 says your faith is dead when if it doesn't have any works in it if you find a person without food if you find a person without the clo- clothing you should give clothing and you should give food food and clothing is important for that particular person who who is without food and without clothing so faith without the uh, works is dead that we should know as soon as we are born again as soon as we are reborn we should know about this the even the holy spirit will lead us into all truth he will teach us all truth this truth will be let uh, will be taught to us by the holy spirit the promised holy spirit which has come into us and we have received the holy spirit in the temple of god temple of god is our body which has received the holy spirit and we will be knowing all these things and uh, our uh, deeds can be done this way by giving giving is important for all uh, born again christians ministries is very important even for the born again christians important born again christians only can become the ministers of god by giving by preaching also preaching mark 16:15 Jesus just before his ascension that just before his going to heaven 
he calls in Mark 16, that's the last chapter, in which he, call, in which he calls all his disciples and, and he, he tells them, go, go into the world, into the whole nation and preach the gospel to all the nation. What does it mean? Preach the gospel to all nations. Gospel means good news. It's a good news. Good news. What is the good news all about? It doesn't. It is not uh, Jesus came to save you. Nothing like that. Most of the people go and say like that. Jesus has come to save you. That is why they are beaten and uh, sent away. They are in certain places. You would uh, see Christians are being beaten and uh, battered and uh, sent away from some places. Why? Because these people go, they are not even uh, um, leading a good Christian life. They go and say that uh, Jesus loves you all such. Jesus loves you. G he has given his uh, own uh, uh, the father's uh, breath, uh, sorry, the promised Holy Spirit. Jesus has come and he has given the promise and he goes to the father sends the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is in you and you are leading you are leading a good life even you are leading a good life somebody comes and asks you how you could lead a good life like this you could uh, preach there yes because of Christ I doing this so person who comes and asks you would be convinced that such a life is good for him also see if you are going and selling uh, shoes, no, shoes, those people are not uh, wearing shoes. You are going and selling shoes, right? But it's good or bad. How do you know? If you are using the shoes beforehand, you would know that is good for you. If people come forward to know, uh, come forward to know about uh, the shoes worn by you are good. They would come and ask you, you I'm sleeping most of the time, I'm just falling down, I'm not able to use any other shoes, but you are using a good shoe, it seems. How you are wearing, what is that uh, uh, about that and uh, what type of a thing they were wearing, all such. You can tell them, it's a good type of thing, all such. And they, these people will be very much pleased to buy such a good type of, or good sort of, or good pair of shoes from you, the same type. It is not that you should go and tell those people that Jesus is loving them, God is loving them, Jesus has come for them. You go and tell them Jesus has, gone, uh, uh, has come to love you. He has done such, this much to you and uh, that's why you are like this. Even you, um, uh, even you, cannot, you need not explain that much. When you go and show yourself off, you can be questioned by the people, you can preach them. You can preach that you have received that much. That much can be enjoyed by them too. If they are pleased to know it about from you, that is the preaching. That is the good news. Good news is to, it should have been enjoyed by you. You should have, you should have known about good news. You should have known the gospel yourself first. You should have enjoyed your health. Then you can preach about health to others. What, what way? You are healthy because of God's love, because of God's preaching, because of Christ, because of the promised Holy Spirit. Those people will be also pleased to know about it and accept you. Accept the same promised Holy Spirit. That is important. That is what Jesus said. And Jesus said, go and baptize. That is what I said in the beginning, birth versus rebirth, life versus faith and work versus baptism. Baptism, we select most of the time what is lesser important. Jesus said, go and pray this way. You go and lock your door and pray to the Father who is in heaven, who is in secret. But we don't do that. Instead, we go to the corners. Jesus said, don't go to the corners and shout and scream and pray that people should watch you and they know that you have been praying. You will, ha you will have your own reward. He said, you should not do, but we are doing. He said, don't fast like this. 
you fast when you fast you just put oil on your head wash your face also etc and people should not know that you are fasting and fast that way and we are proclaiming that we are fasting that fasting is also after also a waste and when you give give away through i mean by your right hand where the left hand will not, uh, should not know that you have been giving that way in a private man a private way should do but we are doing the other way whatever has been commanded is not being followed whatever is not commanded not to be done is done the same way ministry is also god has designed for us to do ministry preaching preaching should be there in the ministry as as the way i have explained giving should be there in the ministry who is giving away to the poor no they are earning they are getting their own way preaching is also important that's good that uh, consoling people that's good but giving is also important part of the ministry that's not done by, by most of the people giving and another one important thing that's luke 1037 where Jesus in a parable speaks about this one the lawyer comes to Jesus Christ and asking him who is who is his neighbor Jesus explains a thing or is uh, uh, telling a parable whereby he was able to understand then he questions the lawyer the lawyer himself answers who is his neighbor this is a good samaritan story no and where uh, the lawyer answers is saying that uh, who is your neighbor neighbor is none but the person who helps the victim jesus asked the uh, lawyer to go and do likewise it is not for the lawyer alone it is for all christians to go and do likewise likewise means you go and help the victims victims of all sorts how the good samaritan good samaritan Uh, laws we have in even in india 2015 supreme court of india has formed a, a good a law about a good samaritan even the good samaritan the particular phrase is used the terminology has been formed from the bible the parable of jesus christ but we are not doing it it's a part of the ministry go and do likewise that is found in 1037 go and do likewise so that is there this uh, go and do likewise what type of thing it's medically you can do physically you can do legally also it's important legally proverbs 31 9 says open your mouth to defend the rights of the poor and the needy by being an advocate so advocates the, this particular profession is very needed for doing ministry how you can do open your mouth and defend the rights of the poor and needy how you can do otherwise except being a lawyer or advocate bible says proverbs 31:9 says open open your mouth and defend the rights of the poor and the needy when victims are coming criminal law in that victims they are not able to pay money you you defend that person if he is right if he is a victim he is a victim of any kind of uh, thing any any victim if he is not able to pay even poor and needy not for the civil cases he, this is for the criminal cases poor and needy but the lawyer should be there so it is a part of the ministry we have to identify ourselves and arbitration also we, bible speaks about that even the um, uh, even if you do ministry you should you should have your own arbitrators to judge people there in their own churches or the organization they should not go for everything to the court or elsewhere arbitration laws are there in india even in india um, we have a 1996 act arbitration conciliation act in 1996 and central law is there for the world most of the uh, countries have ratified the arbitration and central law and we have that arbitration is being spoken of even in the bible in a fantastic way by paul st paul i have spoken about this particularly in a separate 
um, way that will be also uh, useful for you if you want to go through. Uh, we will be touching that in a separate uh, manner later. Arbitration is spoken in 1st Corinthians 6, 1 to 8. So, arbitrator is none but a private judge being appointed by the private parties, two parties who are in dispute. They want to judge the, their uh, dispute by the private arbitrator. It's being uh, advised by the Bible. So, we have to learn all such things. This is, this is for uh, uh, coming to some type of, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, amicable uh, relationship or for finding a solution for the disputes. We have to do all these things without knowing uh, God loves you, God loves you, all such times without you realizing that God has loved you. If you, God has loved you, you would not have a certain things which uh, you say that you are suffering. You suffer in spirit. That means spirit will guide you and uh, teach you how to overcome all these things. This is the world where we find all sufferings, but we will overcome. We will overcome through the promised Holy Spirit which has been given to us. This is a fantastic way to learn about fundamentally, basically, biblically. We Go ahead with other topics later on. God bless you. Thank you.